Hey, it's Dr. Toby here. Have you ever wanted to go downstairs but you were afraid because you weren't sure if your knee was gonna give out, like you just didn't know what was gonna happen this time? I wanna show you in this video the two reasons why your knee buckles and how to get it to stop doing that. And if you stick around to the end, I'm gonna show you two exercises that are gonna make the big world of a difference for you to get your knee to stop buckling. So let's jump right into it. So first things first, the reason why your knee buckles is because of two predominant reasons. Number one, you have to decrease your load and double your leverage. What does that mean? Well, one of the biggest issues or the three categories of reasons that affect the knee in terms of its buckling is gonna boil down to these things that I'm gonna share. Number one is weakness, number two is weight, and the other one, the third, is wrong posture or wrong positioning, wrong movement. So let's talk about the first one. When your body is weak, you're not gonna be able to have stability to sustain the joint position. So you're going downstairs, you're on one leg for a certain period of time, and what begins to happen is that knee collapses under all of the weight, plus the inability for the muscles to keep the strength there. So there's weakness there. But part of what happens is as we gain weight, when people get to being overweight and things like that, what happens is the amount of load that's on their body is not sufficiently supported by the amount of strength that's in their legs. And so your legs may not even be that weak, but they're just weak compared to the amount of weight that you're carrying. And so what happens is the weakness becomes a problem because the muscles can no longer support the joint. And so when you get a certain amount of pressure put, maybe like you're stepping down off of a curb or stepping up a step, what happens is that knee begins to collapse under the pressure because now you're not just standing on two feet. What's happening is you're actually on one foot for a certain period of time and the knee does not have enough strength or the ability to sustain the amount of strength for that period of time when you're going up the stairs or going down the stairs and the knee just gives out because it's tired. It's like, man, I've been working for so much and I really don't have enough to keep going and the knee just stops, it gives out. So weakness is really going to be a factor, but then there's the weight component where it's like, hey, if there's a lot of weight and there's not enough strength compared to the amount of weight, then what happens is the knee crumbles under that. And then the last thing is wrong posture. One of the things that leads to weakness is a lot of times people, they develop wrong posture, which causes their muscles to be weak. So you'll see them getting up out of chairs where they're you know, standing up and their knees are kind of caving in, right? What they're doing is they're encouraging weakness in their muscles because certain muscles that are supposed to support them, they're deactivating those muscles by putting their hands in that position and getting up from their chairs, stuff like that. And so for a lot of times, for most people who are sitting throughout the day, they're not living an active life. Active life, what happens is their body just begins to develop weakness because if you don't use it, you lose it. Your body's like, well, you know, we don't need to really, you know, use that much energy or maintain that much strength. So but the other thing is this, what happens is if you just decrease your load, meaning managing that weight better, decreasing how much weight your body is carrying, you're going to see a drastic change in your ability to not have your knee buckle. And then from there, if you double your leverage, so your leverage comes from your muscles, your body's ability to move itself right when you are carrying a load so what you want to do is get stronger and i'm going to show you the two best exercises right now that are going to help you to cause that knee to get stronger and stop buckling all right so i want to show you the exercises that are going to be critical for you two exercises and they're super simple you got to do stability and stamina exercises stability means your body's ability to hold a position your muscles being able to hold a position for a certain length of time or being able to hold a position stamina means your body's ability to hold that position for a certain period of time so there's stability and there's stamina and really the exercises can be the same it just depends on how you do them so it's not about the volume of exercises it's about the precision it's about how specific those exercises are to helping you to be able to go up and down the stairs without having that knee collapse right how similar do the exercises that you're doing to train your knee, how similarly do they replicate the same kind of forces that you experience when you're going up and down stairs or whenever you typically experience that knee buckling. So, so you can do these right from home. Bridge exercise right on your back. You're here, you're in a bridge position. Cross those arms. Maybe if you really struggle to do this, you can start with your arms in the easy version where your arms are on the ground like so but you're going to lift that bottom up squeezing those glutes. You really want to tighten up those glutes and feel that squeeze, right? So you're gonna have to adjust your legs in terms of where that position is, but this is a safe exercise. Why? Because you don't have a risk of hurting yourself while you're at home or doing things like that. And so stability 
is gonna be great because we're activating quads and hamstrings in this exercise, which you're gonna need for stability when you're going up and down stairs. So you wanna encourage that activation, especially if those muscles are weak. So doing that exercise up and down, squeezing those glutes every single time, really getting that activated. But the key here is especially for stability and stamina, you wanna start off doing holds. Don't just plow up and down, three second hold or five second hold, right? Start off easy, do three seconds if you're new to this, five seconds and build it up. I would even for a period of time, once you've gotten comfortable, start going into 10 second holds, doing two sets of five, things like that, and really being able to hold that position uh, is gonna be helpful. So the next exercise that you wanna think about is clams. One of the reasons why people have problems with their knees is because their hips are weak. And so you wanna be able to get into this position where you're lifting that leg up. Make sure you roll forward. You don't want your body rolling back as you do this. You wanna keep your pelvis, your hips stacked upon each other. And it's not about how far back you go. It's about making sure you're really feeling that in that area there. So keep that in mind, right? But again, we can even progress this to using some like resistance bands, um, things like that to make this even more challenging um, or doing some holds, right? Holding that position three seconds up and down. It's very essential, right? Don't just plow through the exercise. Think about three second hold, five second hold, two sets of 10 or different things like that and going from there. Now, as you start to build strength and see some improvement, realize that just because you see some improvement doesn't mean that you've completely solved the issue after you've gotten to a routine like this. And what you want to think about is progressing to more real life type of exercises where um, you're going to translate to standing or doing kinds of activities where if you were doing it during the day, your knee might buckle. So simple uh, exercise is like a squat hold, right? Now, most people are not gonna be able to do this kind of exercise starting off. They're gonna need to uh, get like a chair or something like that so that they can do this safely. And I'll show you that in a second. All right, so with an exercise like this where we're doing a squat hold, what we wanna do is we wanna get into the squatted position, right? But first thing we wanna do is shift our weight to our heels. Want your weight in your heels stick your bottom back. So you wanna stick that bottom back, let the bottom go back and then drop it down. Holding on to this for support, having this nice right behind you just in case that knee gives out, but you wanna put yourself in a training environment where you're holding that position and you squeeze your bottom as you come up. Squeeze, three to five second hold is a great place to start, squeeze. Squeeze. Now, why are we doing these holds? We don't just want to plow through the exercise. If you're really in a tough position where you really have difficulty uh, performing this or holding, then start off just doing plowing through, just going, right, and doing what you can and stopping when you feel like your knee's going to give out. The thing that is that you have to realize is you improve your limits or you can push yourself to your limit and leverage that limit by pushing yourself to it. So what it means is that, hey, I actually wanna do the exercise to the point where I'm just doing my little squats, right? I'm building my stability and endurance, and then I start to feel like, okay, I feel like I'm getting weaker, feel like my knee's gonna give out, that's when I take a break, right? And then I get back and I do it again, expose myself to that same limitation so that what once was a limitation now becomes my leverage. Because before, maybe I could only do, ooh, I did three and like my knee feels like it's about to give out, I gotta sit down. But what happens is, as I continue to expose myself to that three that I can do, and then I sit down, what's happening is I'm building stamina and stability, and that's gonna change the game for people who have knee buckling issues. So the two types of exercises are stamina and stability exercises, and it's mostly gonna deal with how you're performing the exercise. So the ideal is that you wanna start doing longer holds of certain positions that challenge you right? Holding in that position, right? Maybe you just have to start off just being able to get out of the chair without doing this, right? Get out of a chair without pushing those legs together because again, we talked about wrong posture. You don't want to keep encouraging that. That's going to encourage you to utilize muscles or underutilize muscles that need to be stronger, need to get stronger. So maybe you need to increase the height of the chair, right? That you're doing this from, get a higher chair so that way it's easier and you can 
practice standing up and down without pushing your knees together, that's gonna be a very big game changer. So for some people, that's the place to start with. But if you're unsure of where to start, hit the link in our description where you can talk to a PT first and just have a free conversation and understand some of the things that you have going on in your particular situation so we can see how to best help you and get you to where you wanna be. So if you found this video helpful, leave a like and leave a comment, let us know what you found helpful. And of course, hit the subscribe button. You don't wanna miss out on all the helpful videos that we're making just to help you get healthy, pain-free, fit, and mobile and develop confidence so you can live your best and happiest life. See you in the next video.